Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, we continue talking about um, things in our space and time related to Galilean transformations. Um, so it's all pre-relativity kind of state of physics before major Einstein's work related to special theory of relativity. So the most important part in that time was that our space is basically uniform. Um, uh, our time is absolute. It doesn't really depend on which um, inertial f uh, reference frame you're, you're talking about, from which inertial frame you're observing our universe. Uh, and the Galilean transformations are basically the most important kind of transformation of coordinates and um, all the laws of physics uh, are supposed to be the same in all the uh, inertial frame systems. That's basically the Galilean uh, invariance principle. Now the previous lecture was about whether Galilean transformations are, <coughs> are really what we are promising um, them to be when we are talking about certain laws of physics. Primarily we were considering the first and the second Newton's uh, law of mechanics. But these are not the only laws, obviously. Um, the, today's lecture will be about two other laws which also are invariant relative to um, Galilean transformation, which is the good thing. <laughs> The bad thing will be next. So the good thing is that whatever the laws we are discussing so far are really invariant. Now, today um, we will um, talk about two different laws. The law of uh, universal gravitation law and uh, Coulomb's law when electrostatic uh, field is related to. Now, now before doing this, um, I would like to consider something a little bit more fundamental, which is um, our uniformity of space, so to speak. And one of the most important characteristics of space is the distance between two points. Now, this distance is actually part of these two laws which I was just talking about, um, the law of gravitation and the Coulomb's law. And that's why I would like to start today <coughs> from analyzing whether the distance between two points in one inertial system is exactly the same as in another uh, inertial system. Uh, if, we, if we connect these two systems with Galilean transformation. Now, um, more kind of scientific term um, it's, uh, it's called matrix of our space. So the matrix is basically what the distance is kind of measured in, right? So metric invariance is the name of this particular lecture. Now this lecture is uh, part of um, the course called Relativity for All. Uh, it's presented on unizor.com uh, website. Now, the website is totally free, there are no advertisements, so you can just go and study whatever you want. Um, it also has certain functionality uh, behind it. For example, um, you can have supervised study if you want to, then you will probably need to sign in. But again, that's completely free and no, no strings attached. There are exams in certain cases, not, not all of them. Um, and also the site contains two very important prerequisite course for relativity. The one is called Math for Teens and another is Physics for Teens. Um, so I presume that whatever material is in those two sites, in, in, in those two courses, um, is supposed to be familiar from any other source, if you wish, doesn't really matter, before you start um, studying relativity. Okay. So, what about metrics? Metric invariance. How do we measure the distance between two different uh, points in our space? Well, first of all, we are talking about two different reference frames, both inertial. 
So inertial frame, uh, any reference frame actually, which we are considering right now is uh, the Cartesian coordinates and we are assuming that our space is Euclidean. Okay, so that basically means that we can use the formula for distance between two points in Cartesian system. Now, what is this particular difference? So, if you have two points, point A and point B, by the way, it doesn't really matter whether they are stationary or moving in the uh, reference frame which we are talking about. But let's consider them uh, without any. I mean, I can put A of T and B of T, where T is the time. Now, we have two different um, reference frames. One reference frame is uh, time and coordinates x, y, and z. Another is time and lowercase x, y, and z. And we are assuming that this frame is moving relative to this frame uniformly. So this is called alpha frame, this is called beta frame. Now at point time equal to zero, let me start first, that we are assuming that the time is absolute. So the time is exactly the same in both systems. At moment t uh, uh, equal to zero, uh, alpha of t equal to zero, coincides with beta at the same moment of time. So at moment time equals to zero, both frames coincide. And then the beta frame is moving relative to alpha frame uh, with a uniform speed uh, along the straight line. Now, so there is a vector of speed, constant vector. Now this vector is not changing, so there is a vector of speed and um, this vector of speed would have um, coordinates vx, vy, and vz. So this is the vector of speed. Now, if I have vector of speed, now before I was preferring actually to um, discuss the situation when only x coordinate is changing. So vy and vz equal to zero. Uh, today I would like to expand it a little bit. Actually, I did expand it in the previous lecture as well, because it doesn't really matter whether it's one particular coordinate is changing all, all three along some constant vector. The formula will be very, very similar. For x conversion, the formula will be basically the same as before. <coughs> We are familiar with this uh, transformation of x coordinate. It was in previous lecture many times before. But exactly the same way would be a transformation of y coordinate. That would be according to, let's get it all. Times t and z of t would be equal to z of t minus v z times t. So these are formula for transformation of coordinates. This is Galilean transformation. And what I would like to know is how the difference, how the distance between two, the two, two points is changing with Galilean transformation. So how this particular distance is viewed from one system if we know the other system. Okay. Now let's assume that point A has coordinates x of t, y of t, and z of t. And point, and let's put index A here. And this one would be x b of t, y b of t and zb of t. So these are two points and these are coordinates in alpha system. 
So what's the distance between these two points? Well, the distance, well, the distance square in the system alpha would be, and we know about this, obviously, from geometry, from, from other sources, xb minus xa square plus yb minus ya square plus zb minus za square. This is the square of a distance between two points which we know from basically from the course of geometry. Now all these coordinates they are a function of time so the points might actually shift as the time goes. Might or might not doesn't really matter because the formulas are whether you put t or we don't put t dependence on the time doesn't really matter. The result will be exactly the same. So in this case this is the distance and again if you want we can actually put z of time t so all of these are also times of t I didn't put just to shorten the distance okay how does it change well let's see in the beta system the distance would be similar but lowercase xa um, minus xb rather xb minus xa square plus yb minus ya square plus zb minus za square equals well we know what um, the coordinates in the beta system how they are related to coordinates in the uh, alpha system all right so xa would be xa minus vx t vx is constant i mean that's very important because this is the component of the vector which directs the whole beta system moving uniformly relative to a, a alpha system uniformly means that this vector is constant all the components are constant not depending on the time so whenever i have uh, x uh, b minus x a it will be x a of t minus v x t minus x b of t minus v x of t right so it would be x b minus v x times t well t and capital and lowercase are the same so I can put this lowercase minus x a minus v x times t square plus same thing for y and same thing for z and as you see v x is time v x times t is cancelling out and what's remaining is x b minus x a which is exactly the same as here and with the y component would be exactly the same as this and with the z component would be exactly like this which means that the whole thing is equal to g square alpha of t so that's what we have this is equal to this which means the distance between these two points in the beta system is exactly the same as the distance in the alpha system that's kind of a trivial because this dx dy and dz are constant we are, these are components of the vector which directs how the beta system is shifting relative to alpha system so this is a very easy piece which proves that the distance between two points whether moving or stationary doesn't really matter viewed from two different inertial systems the distance is exactly the same okay what does it mean? Well, it means, for example, that if you have a circle, for instance, in system alpha, and then the beta system is moving relative to alpha, this circle will be a circle in the beta system as well, because the radius will be the same distance from the point, center point to every point on the circumference. Square 
of certain dimension with a certain side would be exactly the square of the same dimensions with the same side in the beta system. So distance is preserved and that's very important for the next two laws which I would like to consider. The first law being the gravitation law. So, the gravitation law tells us the force is equal to some kind of a gravitation constant proportional to both masses and inverse proportional to the square of distance between them. You have to remember that. So this is the mass of the one object, this is the mass of another object, this is the distance between the centers of masses. Now this is a universal constant and the force depends basically on these parameters. This is gravitational force, attraction. Now if I am going from one inertial system to another which moves uniformly relative to the first one. Now, mass is mass, is the property of the object. Uh, G is universal constant regardless of, of, of anything. It's basically um, experimentally uh, derived. So the only thing which might actually, in theory, be changed when one system is moving relative to another is the distance between these two masses. But we have, we have just proven the distance remains the same, whether the masses are stationary or moving, uh, the Earth moving around the Sun, uh, or the uh, Moon moves around, uh, around Earth, doesn't really matter. So in both inertial systems, the distance is the same. And if the distance is the same, then the force actually is the same the formula is the same, Every, the law of gravitation is exactly the same in both inertial systems, which means that the law of gravity is invariant relative to Galilean transformation. And that's very important. It's, it's the good thing, actually, right? Okay, so that's one thing which is kind of obvious. Now, another thing is the Coulomb's law, which is very, very similar. So what is Coulomb's law? Again, the force is equal to some kind of a constant, that's electric constant, and its force is proportional to charges, electric charges, and inversely proportional to square of distance. Exactly the same situation, and for exactly the same reasons, charges are properties of the object, not the system which you are looking from. So, which means that the R is only thing to consider and it's uh, invariant when you're moving from one um, inertial system to another, which means that the formula actually stays. And Ke is just a constant, it's Coulomb's constant, again, experimentally obtained. So, as we see, the metric invariance of our Euclidean space relative to transformation, Galilean transformation from one inertial space to another, from one inertial frame to another. So this metric invariance is a sufficient condition for stating that two more laws, the Newton's gravity, gravity and Coulomb's law, are exactly the same. And again, it's kind of, it confirms our initial theory, which, you know, people considered absolutely correct before relativity came in. Uh, it confirms that all the laws of physics uh, are supposed to be the same uh, in uh, inertial system. They're supposed to be looking the same. If we have a formula, the formula should be the same. So it's not supposed to be like r squared plus, I don't know, plus half of r or something like this. No, it's supposed to be r squared. So that confirms now, did we consider all the laws of physics just to check? No. And that would be a subject of the next lecture where I hope I will demonstrate that there are certain laws which are not invariant, 
when we are moving from one system to another. And that's a, a huge push towards development of relativity theory by Einstein. Okay, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Um, and uh, think about if you really understand everything which is on math for teens and physics for teens course, you can just take a look at, uh, at the menu. The whole thing is menu driven. You really have to be comfortable with math and physics on that level prior to really immersing yourself into relativity. So thanks very much and good luck.